Hello, hello, my dear internet siblings. It's your boy Kevin Zensei here with another video. Today we will be talking about the SAT subject tests being canceled and why you should care. We will talk about how this happened. We will talk about why this happened, which is kind of funny. Um, College Board, it was really for economic reasons more than anything. And then we'll also talk about what this means for you guys. Should I take more APs? What should I do in this scenario? How do I showcase my intellectual curiosity? Good news is that there are multiple ways to do this. You don't have to take the SAT subject test. In fact, in America, I don't think you even can take the SAT subject test anymore. They just straight up canceled it, refunded you. For some international students, you are still able to take the SAT subject tests because I know that some UK colleges or universities as well as other high schools use the SAT subject tests as a factor when deciding admissions, transfers, that sort of thing. I think that there were some statistics in the past where students who are able to submit test scores, either the SAT subject test scores or ACT test scores actually performed better in college admissions. Like 75% of students who were accepted early into like UPenn or Dartmouth had submitted these optional test scores. So that was kind of interesting to find out. I didn't think they were that important, but that statistic is a little bit alarming because colleges are saying that they're not important, but if you submit it and it's good, it looks like it does actually give you a big boost. At any rate, let's take a look at how this happened. Uh, you know, they're accelerating a process that was already underway at the College Board, simplifying its work, reducing demands. SAT subject tests will no longer be offered in the US, though College Board said it will provide two more rounds of testing in May and June for international students, like I mentioned. They're just trying to make it more flexible, adding that it was that it was consulting with elementary high schools and colleges on the effort. Yeah, right, I highly doubt that. Announcement comes as hundreds of colleges across the country have opted to temporarily drop their SAT and ACT requirements due to the lack of access to the test because of the pandemic and equity concerns. Hmm. So SAT is optional. ACT is optional. SAT subject tests have been canceled. Basically, that only leaves AP exams, right? This really happened for a simple economic reason, guys. All right, let's take, take, take a look at the AP. The AP exam is $94 per AP exam. This is a cash cow, my friends. Some kids take 10 or 12 APs throughout the course of high school. Meanwhile, the SAT subject test was about half. Now, the other thing you have to take into account is that SAT subject tests administered literally fell by 300,000 over the course of 13 years, 34% decline. Meanwhile, AP exams, 120% growth. Okay, and they're making double profit. Regardless of whether COVID happened or not, they were already moving in this direction. And then they were like, okay, let's just flip the kill switch, get rid of SAT subject tests. Colleges don't really care about them anyways. By the way, guys, if you could sauce this video a like, I would really appreciate it. I'm donating 10 cents for every like that this video gets to Girls Who Code. If you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing because my channel is about the size of a chloroplast. Thank you guys so much. All right, other things to take into account. If we take a look at just, this is a general SAT score gap. Really like the SAT is symbolic of race and parents' education level and household income. So I'll give you guys an example, right? Like if you're FGLI and you're broke, like this guy, exhibit A. Your household makes very little, your parents are uneducated, and you're like black or Latino, and then you get a monster score, and it was an optional test. Of course that will make you stand out in this year's application process in particular. If you're Asian, wealthy, and you just ended up not taking the exam, I don't think that it will impact you as much, right, as, as the other students. Okay, next thing we wanna talk about is, oh yeah, so here here's a very interesting article by insider higher ed i was kind of interested in this they're taking a look at all these different college admissions officers people who work in the industry and and and, and just trying to gather their thoughts let's just take a look at this section others gave mixed mixed tests mixed reviews okay i had to read that twice katie burns is a master admissions counselor at ivy wise company that consults with students on admissions she's also a former senior assistant director of admissions at um, of the IT. While subject tests have helped students to show talent and mastery in a particular subject when perhaps they earned a lower grade in the actual class or did poorly on the AP test, I have not found the subject test to be very predictive of a student's aptitude or potential for success in a particular subject, Burns said. What's better than a subject test? Students' grade. The grade they're earning in the class day in, day out from doing the work, taking care of business, preparing for quizzes and tests, blah, 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 speak way more than a 60 minute multiple choice test. Thank you, Burns. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so this kind of leads me to AP exams because the SAT subject tests are not as important. Now Burns is saying that your grade for the entire year is important and the AP exam, which happens at the end of you taking this course for a year, 
right? Like that gets weighted even more heavily. So then students are asking me, Kevin, should I take the AP exam? The answer is it depends. At a school like Exeter, where no one was taking APs, you know, you know, plenty of people went to Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Stanford without taking a single AP exam. It really depends on your circumstance and your environment. Let's say you're an international student and your school doesn't offer any AP exams. Should you self-study and then take this exam? Depends on what you want to major in college. It depends on how well you're going to think you think you're going to do on the exam. If you take the exam and do poorly, that's going to hurt you as well. So it is a bit of a gamble. If you're like a junior considering taking the AP exams in the spring, I think that it's it's tough. I I mean, again, if you really feel like you're gonna knock it out of the park, then by all means, go for it. Maybe you can take one or two to really show your intellectual curiosity, your prowess. To each their own, I can't give you an exact recommendation just speaking to you from the camera. I would have to examine your circumstance. And speaking of which, feel free to contact me. Feel free to set up a meeting using the bit.ly slash bothercabin20 link. I'm available for one-on-one -on -one consultations. I want to connect with you guys. I want to help you guys on an individual level. And I love talking to and meeting with my subscribers. Another great question is how can we showcase this academic prowess? I want you guys to start thinking about research opportunities. I want you guys to start designing educational initiatives, right? Let's say you create a seven day virtual engineering boot camp for middle schoolers, or you write a handbook that teaches elementary schoolers about creative writing. You guys could start a YouTube channel and teach kids about quantum mechanics, right? On a very basic level. And of course, if you're able to win an award for your initiative, or you write a paper and that paper wins an award, I think that speaks way more volumes about the kind of person you are, as well as your intellectual curiosity, rather than just like a 60 minute SAT subject test. <sighs> it is a complicated issue guys and I think that it is fuzzy. It's a bit muddy given the whole Zoom virtual school circumstance. I think a lot of students are also worried that their virtual school grades will not necessarily reflect their actual academic abilities. Some students just are not performing very well under this these virtual circumstances. Some of them are doing awesome. It depends. And I think that this is a very tricky, unfortunate circumstance. At the end of the day, guys, control what you can control. And I think that one of the, probably the best way to do this is in the summertime, pick two or three subjects that you're super duper passionate about and see how you can make something out of nothing to showcase a lot of those major points that I talk about. Intellectual curiosity, persistence, determination, leadership, potential, proactivity, selflessness, humility, that sort of thing. Okay guys, that's all for today, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what other videos you would like me to create. I'm constantly rooting for you. Your success is my success. I'll catch you at the next one. All right, guys? Pa -pa 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 Peace.